Hello again. We resume our task of creating a financial model together, where we now take on the revenue model. But first, let us quickly recap our previous session. Using the raw data presented to us, we created the income statement structure, established the formatting rules, and made the assumptions section where we created schedules to forecast each line item of the income statement. And finally, complemented our structure with the CAGR and trend analysis. While making this structure, you were careful not to make those classical mistakes. Like all the figures of these line items are coming from their respective schedules and are not hard-coded there. You can verify this by clicking on the control and backstroke key to have the formula view. And then again press them again to have the normal view. Also, the profit calculation is in consideration of the sign of the expense. And finally, the number of years in the CAGR calculation is the period between the latest and base year. Four in this case and five in this case. Now, as I said previously, that sales will be forecasted in a dedicated schedule, which we will rename the revenue model. The revenue model, like the name suggests, tells us how the company makes money. Together, we will determine the drivers and also make projections about the direction of the top line in the future. So first, let's have a quick glance of what will be our finished product. And now, let's create the same from scratch. Using the information on our screen, let's create a revenue model. And in order to do so, we need to first determine the drivers of revenue. That is what generates the revenue. Let me give you three quick examples, simple ones, to understand what drivers are. If you were to take the case of a telecom company, a telecom company has a subscriber base, or in simple, even more simpler words, its users. Let's assume 1,000. Then you have something known as ARPU. That is the average revenue per user. So in this case, let's consider 100. So sales for a telecom company would be a product of how many users it has into the average revenue per user. Now let's take the case of a bank. A bank has interest earning assets and the biggest example of an interest earning assets is the loans and the advances it gives out. Let's suppose it has loans worth 10,000 and the interest yield it is earning on these loans is supposed to be 5%. So the interest income the bank will generate will once again be a product. That is the percentage, 500. Now let's consider a company that manufactures a product. So the first thing we will have to understand is that one particular unit will have a capacity of the maximum number of units it can produce. Let's assume 1000. Then you will have a utilization rate, which will tell us what was the actual production out of the total capacity. Actual production is 800. And then you will have the rate at which the company will sell each of its product. Let's assume 100. So the sales for this company is going to be its actual production and its rate. What we also have to keep in mind is the utilization rate. Is In this case, it is 80%. Now, we will go through the case over here to determine what will be the drivers. FAS was formed in 1990 and since then has grown to become the largest franchise retailer in Asia. Quality, innovation, service and trust are the guiding principles for all FAS's re fashion retail operations. Since the opening of its first store in 1991, Faz has grown considerably and now trades in more than 2,000 stores across 100 shopping malls in 14 countries, with a retail platform operating on the total GLA, gross leasable area, of nearly 600,000 square meters. All of this is ably managed by a workforce numbering more than 11,000. Faz currently represents over 88 fashion brands across a diverse platform covering uh, the product line. 
The company aims to reach 3,200 stores in the next five years. And below that, we have got key figures. You have the sales, the top line in millions. You have the average selling space. And we have the number of stores. Now, I want you to pause the video and read this case two, three times. And I'm sure you yourself, you will be able to determine what will be the drivers that we will be using in our revenue model. And after you've done that, I would want you to tell me at least two to three different line items that can be considered as potential drivers. Now, as we look at all the information that is here, one can straight away say that you have the average selling space that can be used as a driver. You can have number of stores that can be used as a driver. So it would make sense to use one of them or both of them. But the answer is to use the number of stores because we have guidance from the company management that it aims to reach 3,200 stores in the next five years. So let's start building a revenue model. And that completes the first segment of today's video on revenue model. In our next segment, we will build the revenue model.